All right. And can a man who has sought pleasure, or chapter five, and can a man who has sought pleasure, even in the actual consciousness of his degradation, really have one atom of self-respect? I'm not speaking out of any feeling of unctuous remorse. And in general, I never could bring myself to say, forgive me, Papa, I won't do it again. Not because I was incapable of saying it. On the contrary, perhaps it was precisely because I was all too capable of saying it. And do you know when? As it deliberately? I used to get into awkward situations just on those occasions when I wasn't to blame in any way. That was the most degradating part of it. On such occasions, I would once again be deeply moved. I would repent, shed tears, and of course, I was fooling myself, although I was far from pretending. It was my heart that was somehow defiled. Here, I couldn't even blame the laws of nature, although the laws of nature have constantly offended me all the same. More than anything else, my whole life, I find it degrading to recall this now, and it was deg um, degrading at the time. I find it degrading to recall this now, and it was degrading at the time, you see. After a minute or so, I would be bitterly reflecting the whole thing was a lie, a lie, a loathsome hypocritical lie that it all, that is all these regrets, all this emotion, all these promises of regeneration. And if you ask why I tormented and mangled myself like, like that, the answer is because I was already terribly bored idly sitting around and so I indulged in all manner of capers. Really, that's how it was. If you observe yourselves a little more closely, gentlemen, you understand that it is so. I used to imagine adventures for myself. I invented a life so that I could at least exist somehow. How many times, for example, have I taken offense just like that for no reason? And I myself knew very well that I had no reason to take offense and that I was putting it on. But I would work myself up to such a degree that in the end, I really did feel offended. All my life, I've been attracted to playing games like that so that finally I lost all self-control. Once or even twice, I wanted to force myself to fall in love. I really did suffer for it. Gentlemen, I can assure you, deep down within me, I just can not believe in my own suffering there's a hint of self-mockery here but i suffer all the time and in an authentic genuine fashion i'm jealous i lose all control over myself and it all stems from boredom gentlemen from sheer boredom i'm crushed by inertia after all the immediate legitimate direct fruit of consciousness is inertia that is con consciously sitting twiddling your thumbs i mentioned this before i repeat i repeat most emphatically all spontaneous people and men of action are active because they're all dull-witted and limited what is it um I want men of action. Oh. What is the explanation for this? Well, it's like this. As a result of their limitations, they take immediate and secondary causes for primary ones and are thus persuaded more quickly and easily than others that they have found an indisputable basis for whatever they do, and so they are reassured. And that's the main thing. You see, in order to begin to act, you must be completely sure in advance that there are no residual doubts whatsoever. But how can I, for example, reassure myself? How can I reassure myself? Where are my primary causes on which I can take a stand? Where are my foundations? Where should I take them from? I practice these things and consequently every primary cause immediately draws another in its wake. One that is even more primary and so on ad infinitum. And so on ad infinitum. Ad infinitum. I think it's like a, it's a hyphen word. A-D space I-N-F-I-N-I-T-U-M. And that is precisely the essence of all thought processes or self-awareness. Again, this must be therefore the laws of nature. And what is the final result? Well, exactly the same. Remember that I was talking of revenge not so long ago. He probably didn't get my meaning very well. I said that a man avenges himself because he finds justice in it. That means he has found his primary cause, has found a basis for his actions, namely justice. Therefore, he is completely reassured on all counts and consequently takes his revenge calmly and successfully, convinced that what he is doing is just, just and honorable. But for the life of me, I can see neither justice here nor virtue, and consequently, if I start taking my revenge, it's really out of spite. Spite, of course, can overcome everything, all my doubts, and therefore it could quite successfully serve instead of, of a primary cause for the simple reason that it's not a cause. But what can I do if I don't even feel spite? After all, that's what I began with a short time ago. Again, as a result of those damn laws of consciousness, my spite is subject to chemical decompensation or de de decomposition. Just look, and the object vanishes into thin air. Reasons evaporate. The culprit is nowhere to be found, and the offense is no longer an offense, but becomes destiny. Something in the nature of a toothache for which no one is to blame, and consequently there again remains the same way out that is banging your head against the wall so that it hurts even more. So you give it up as a bad job because you failed to find a primary cause, but just... You try letting yourself be carried along blindly by your emotions, without reasoning, without primary cause, banishing your consciousness, at least for the time being, hate or love, do anything but sit there, not doing a stroke. The day after tomorrow, at the very latest, you will begin to despise yourself for having knowingly deceived yourself. The result is a soap bubble and inertia. You see, gentlemen, perhaps I only consider myself an intelligent person because all my life I've never been capable of starting or finishing anything. All right, so I'm a windbag, a harmless, tiresome windbag. 
all of us are, but what can one do about it if the direct and sole purpose of any intelligent man is idle chatter that is deliberately milling the wind, deliberately milling the wind? I think that was number five, right? Yeah, I think it was number five. Four. Two. Three, four. Yeah, that was chapter four, so I'm on chapter five. But I just I just finished chapter four. <laughs>